All right. Thank you, Dave. Welcome, everybody. And today I'm going to be talking about technical analysis, how to simplify it. Whether you're a day trader, a swing trader, you're using options, we're investing. It's all the same. We're just changing time frames. Now let's get going here. All right, a little bit about myself. I started in the late 80s. I didn't know anything about the market. You know, what's a stock? What's a bond? Uh, 1984, after a lot of self-education, the hard way, started a uh, fax service, thermal paper, sending out, you know, those machines that used to get your information from. Uh, went to a hotline, first chat room. Uh, back in the day, I had an office where we did live trading. People came from around the world and from different countries and traded there. We did seminars and hotels and, and started recordings. I had an online brokerage firm. So old timer in, in this industry back in 2015, I sold those old 1990 recordings in the name and uh, moved on and started Master Trader shortly after that. I used to do live trading challenges. I used to go to the trading shows and so on. And, uh, you know, back in the day, I'm going to show you a picture of the first one where I was at. And over the years, I've educated a lot of people. I said hedge fund managers, market makers, specialists, prop traders, just regular people like you and me. And quite a few of my past students actually now teach for a living and uh, they work for other companies, maybe they have their own and so on. And if you go to the website, you can uh, check out some of the names that are there. Some of them, you know, I'm sure you know pretty well. This was me over 20 years ago at my trading booth. And you can see behind there, the theme of the day was training, trading and technology. We talked about the T3 concept, and uh, obviously we traded, we talked about training, and the brokerage firm and Master Trader, a little while after that, that was actually the logo of Master Trader back in the day when it was a brokerage firm, one of the first online brokerage firms offering people direct access to trading. It was kind of the Wild West back at the time uh you know where the internet was just in the development mode so we were all excited to get involved with doing that and placing our own trades a little while before that it was illegal for you to uh, trade for yourself not trade for yourself but place the trade yourself you had to go to a licensed broker to do it and you know i was at the uh, the beginning of the day of when the empowerment of the individual back in the time where the Fidelities and uh, the other brokerage firms, the Schwabs were saying, stay away from those day traders at that expo. You'll lose all your money. Now they own these expos where they uh, tell everybody about day trading and their, their software. So what I'm going to talk to you today is the foundation of reading price action. That's, that's what I do. That's what I teach others how to read price action. We're price pattern traders and we do trend analysis in a really simple way. We look at multiple time frames, relative strength, relative weakness. I'm going to talk a lot about retracements today. Uh, bar by bar analysis, something I coined back in the day to help me with my own trades of staying in the moment, not get caught up in my greed and fear and reading what was actually happening. Um, and we create a, bar a market bias based on what these trends are and market internals, and then we enter trades and we manage them per a trading plan and money management, which is probably one of the, I guess, is the most important thing. You know, we all wanna know about patterns and press, how to press the button to buy and sell, but without money management, you're not gonna last in this game. So as I got into trying to explain to others what I do, um, I looked up this, definitions of being objective and subjective uh, based on reading price patterns. And, you know, objective was reading what was factual, what was real. Um, and what was real is the price data coming onto our price charts. We can't manipulate that. Um, whatever the close is, it is. So we're all looking at the same thing. I can change the time frame, which changes the look of the picture, but I can't change what the close is. And, you know, we're all looking at the same five-minute charts or daily charts. And subjective was something 
you know, personal opinion, judgment, feelings, your point of view. Then to say we don't have feelings, but it's got to be based on objective information, not based on what I'll call a spaghetti screen of squiggly lines. And this is your menu, so to speak, of what is your squiggly line of choice. Uh, so here I'm showing you 68 different indicators. I could find a hundred more. And of course there are the, uh, the, in, the indicator salesmen out there that will sell you their proprietary indicators and how to set them up and it'll give you the red light, green lights and what to buy and what to sell until they have a new one to sell you. And then of course with all of this, these different indicators, which ones do you use? What are the settings? Uh, and so on. So here's a real simple screen showing, you know, two common indicators, stochastics and MACD, right? What's overbought, what's oversold. Um, again, as you change the settings, the signals change, which to me, when I, I started out, I used this stuff because as I opened up my first trading platform in the day back then on my 286 AT&T computer downloading data over the phone line, um, it had indicators. And so the same questions, you know, way back then, which ones are the right ones? Which are the ones that are going to make me money? Um, which are the right settings? And, you know, today there are optimized settings and modified settings. And you know, say, you know, is this you today trying to figure this out? I'm sure there's some of you in here that it's exactly who you are because it's where we all start out because we're all inundated with the same stuff when you open up your trading platform and say, what happens when I change that time frame and all the signals change? So it could become a real mass of confusion, you know, including the same thing with trend lines and the questions that arise from drawing them. And I thought to myself, how many times can I redraw this line after it breaks and keep believing that this is a valid piece of information? And how many points can I connect, like I say, to create your maze of confusion? You know, you see some charts there on the internet where, you know, the lines are overlapping each other. They're going up, they're going down, they're going sideways. It's insane. It truly is insane, this technical analysis, uh, education industry that creates this, what we're supposed to do based on these indicators and draw and drawing lines uh, and then projecting them into the future. And I would say, how many of you in here have done this, actually connecting these lines and thought, does this really work? But you're still doing it, right? This is where we all are. And you start thinking, did I connect them to the wrong spots? Are they supposed to be connected on the closes instead of the tails? And it just becomes, you know, a, just a rabbit hole that, you know, you're going to go down. And as you start to think, okay, pitchforks, speed lines, Fibonacci lines, extensions, GAN lines, Elliott waves, square of nine, is it a full moon? This is a crazy, crazy, you know, game that we've all gotten into and the what we've been fed to believe that this is what we're going to use to make money. Well, after you spend some time doing this and, and connecting dots and trying to figure this all out, you'll either give up or you might come to the same conclusion I did, that this is all a bunch of hocus pocus malarkey right say so insanity we all know the definition you're doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results and some i mean i spent probably a couple of years questioning this stuff and using it um maybe a little longer than that honestly and and just thinking there's got to be a better way because this is crazy trying to figure it all out now moving averages which i do use as what I call a visual aid, but we have to understand that they're subjective too if we don't understand the proper way to use them. So, and as we change time frames, the positions of these moving averages change, the slope of the moving averages change. 
So again, we have to use them intelligently and more questions, simple ones, exponential ones, weighted ones. There are triangular ones. There are optimized ones. I mean, it just doesn't stop. Um, and I'm showing you here daily time frame, weekly time frame. They're in different positions. You know, how do you make sense out of reading price action through indicators or lines that are on your screen? Okay? It just doesn't make sense. And they're not support and resistance. They can become a self-fulfilling prophecy, like a 50 MA or a 200 MA on the S&P 500, because everybody's looking at it, especially the institutions, the big money. So yes, we will look at those major moving averages on a daily time frame because everybody else is looking at it and they may react to it. They probably will. So if you're looking at a screen like this with, if I don't destroy the name, Ichikumi Cloud, which might be the ultimate indicator determining trends, support, resistance, multiple time frames, buy and sell signals and all of that, you know, it is just becomes overwhelmingly and I say, like, can you see the prices through the indicator? And, you know, to boot, we just put another indicator on the bottom of it to read buy and sell signals and momentum and so on. So if you are, are thinking like I did many years ago, like the guy in the middle of the screen holding his head and saying, what do I do here with all of this noise? Well, I'm going to tell you, just clean the chart up and remove it and learn to read price action. Right. So hopefully you're ready to listen about a, of a different way. So master trader technical analysis, right? What are we actually doing here? Well, these are pictures of other people's, other traders' beliefs and expectations. That's what charts are. And, and that they create that with money, which means, you know, they've got skin in the game and they believe in what they're doing, whether they're shorting, buying, selling. As we read that, these patterns communicate to us what other traders are doing, how they've acted, what their beliefs are, what their expectations are in the time frame that we're viewing in that moment. And obviously that can change right, from moment to moment, you know, depending on the time frame you're looking at. Now, when we look at multiple time frames and trends, right, that shows us the trend of those beliefs. And as we look at candlesticks, it provides us a picture of of those expectations on an ongoing basis. That's why you know I kind of coined the, the term candle language because that's it. When we're reading candlesticks, I don't really care what you call it. Is it green? Is it red? Does it have a tail? Is it a small candle body? All of the those are the things that I look at. Names are irrelevant to me. Um, so we're, we're interested in momentum. Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? All right. And what do these candles tell me? about you know, what we just said here, beliefs of other traders, what are they doing? So let's make this as simple as we possibly can. Right? Now, we have to pick time frames. So if you're a day trader, right, for me, I use a 60 minute chart for my bias and I use a five minute chart for entries and I use a two minute chart when there's momentum. So I'm looking at more detail of those pictures in a smaller time frame. For swing trading, and I don't need to sit in front of my screen, I use a daily chart and a weekly chart. I get, I find buy setups and trends, and I look for those time frames to be in agreement, and I place a trade. All right, position trading, weekly and monthly time frames. I don't have to sit in front of the screen all day. I can even look on my phone, like you know, and see the patterns. I can, you know, we can place trades today from our phones. Um, so the technology has evolved tremendously from the day I started, where I used to place trades over a telephone. All right, so again, the analysis is all the same. It's just the time frames that are changing. We don't need indicators. There's no proprietary systems. There's no software. All right, so I'm not here to sell you something that locks you in to my software or my signals or indicators. And I'm here to empower you, to, you to move on to that knowledge and use it any way you choose fit in the time frame, whatever platform you're going to use it. So let's just for the moment call A and Z support and resistance. And so to read momentum, right, again, without indicators, well, the 
question, is it increasing or decreasing? So how fast are prices moving from A to Z? Now, to understand retracements, why they're important, we just say, well, how far have prices moved from A to Z? Candlesticks, now we look at those pictures of the reversals and they tell us whether momentum is increasing or decreasing. And now we want interested how far are prices moving, right, from these distances? What is the distance between these two reference points that we call support and resistance? And for trends and trend changes, we just follow these moves between them. Right? It just it's so super simple, right? Now, as we look at these candlesticks, which I've created here, right? And obviously, it's not a real chart. And on the left side, you see small, relatively small candles. And then we see this big giant one, right? Clearly, momentum has increased. There's something of significance here that has occurred. Now, in the middle, on the bottom, we see that the candles are overlapping. Um, you know, this kind of indecision there is trying to turn higher, but, you know, it's ups and downs. Whereas the one above it, you have this fluid move to the upside where each candle opens in the area of the prior candles close. So you say, well, why does that happen? Well, because it's one giant move. The only reason it's broken up is because I chose a time frame that ends the prior period and started it over again, and then it continues. And in the last example, you just see these big candles that it gaps up from the prior one and continues higher, right? So it's real easy to see when momentum is slow and when it's increasing. And of course, I don't need any other information to just look at what's occurring on my chart. So here is a chart where we can look at an example of that. On the left side of the screen, things move straight down. It starts with one big red candle gapping down, and that suggests it's going to keep going down. It's, it's a fast, big candle. It's power, and it continues to move down. Now, the candle with the little bottoming tail bar with the green dot underneath it, it was going down and it stopped and it started going up and it's a small candle body. So the momentum slowed down. Doesn't necessarily mean I want to buy it because it was preceded by a powerful move and it retraces up and it goes down again. Now, as it does that, and then the momentum begins to slow down over here, how do I read that happening oh, greater than just one bar at a time? All you need to do is look at the distance between the lows. And those that will show you an indicator and say, well, here's this bullish divergence through the indicator. It's like, wow, that must be some kind of magic indicator that can tell when this turn is going to happen. Yeah, they always do that in 2020 hindsight. Well, all you need to do is look at these distance between the closes and then a reversal beginning to happen. And the closer they are together, it tells you the momentum is slowing doesn't mean it's going to it's a buy we're just reading that piece of information so this was a relatively slow advance and then it kind of chops around pulling back and it speeds up again and then it pulls slowly back again and then fast and then the momentum slows down and you look over to the left there there's an unfilled gap so slow overlapping bars small candle bodies narrow ranges got tails fast just the opposite Big bars, right? Big candle bodies, right? Complete candles, small tails, and tail, big tail, small body. The momentum is beginning to slow down. Right. Okay. All right. So here's just an, another example, and you can see the fast move, and then we're looking at the distance between the lows, and when it broke the prior low, right, that big tail bar with the green body, it marginally breaks it, and then you get a big green candle popping up off of the low. Right? So slowing momentum and a fast reversal to the upside. So something's changing there, right? It's beginning to bottom out. Then it went sideways and begins to make a turn, and you can see how it speeds up again, up into the happy guy, with the light bulb on his head that's saying, 
hey, I'm beginning to get this. All right, I can see increasing momentum and decreasing momentum and, and turns. And then when it formed that what we call a topping tail under the smiley guy, right, that big tail bar says that sellers took control, but it didn't go down. And when it formed that reversal bar, right, the green bar after the red one, it's pretty good price action considering how fast it went up. So again, we're continuing to read this information of slowing momentum and decreasing momentum and putting it all together. Now, what retracements, right? remember I'm saying, we're just looking at where did it start the move? A, where did it end the move? Z. So on the upper left, we have one candle. Right? Okay. So it's a big green, red candle. And if we look inside of it down below, that's just representing a smaller time frame. So a whole bunch of little candles moving down from A to Z. Now on the right side, if we were to see that big red candle on the left, and the next candle, regardless of the time frame, was a giant green candle and it moved all the way back up. Well, that's a big retracement. That's positive. It negated that big red bar. And it's the same thing for an intraday chart. As it begins to turn, if we see a complete retracement back up to A, right, the one on the left, well, that's a big retracement and that's positive. It's really that simple. So, the larger the move from A to Z, the greater the strength. Right? The deeper the price is from A to Z, right? we say the greater the strength. And the faster they do it, meaning what if it took, if we had a five minute chart and it took two hours to get up, retrace back up to the top of that move to A. Whereas what if it happened in 10 minutes? Well, fast momentum move. It's just common sense once you understand it. Common sense is such once someone points it out to you. Then you go, oh, yeah, it is just common sense. So momentum is speed, and we're interested in retracements. How fast did it retrace? So what we see there in the middle of the chart, where you can see the little gap up where the volume increases, and this big, giant green bar goes all the way up to the horizontal blue line. That's power. And we respect power because it suggests that it's going to keep going. Now, it doesn't have to go on the next bar, but our expectation is that it's going to keep going. And then that two bar reversal that's pointed out, now we're reading the tells, as we call it, right? The red bars that don't follow through to the downside. That's bullish price action that supports our prior bias, right? So bar by bar analysis helps us continue our analysis. All right, so the wide range bar then coming out of the base is new power. And then you see it pulls back two wide range bars. So there are corrections along the way, of course. There you know, typically is unless it's, you know, uh, what is it, Tesla, right? But there's some correction coming tomorrow, right? It was down over 100 points after the close all of a sudden. So as we look at candlesticks and there's this, these names that are involved, you know, Haramai's, Dark Cloud Covers, Morning Stars, Evening Stars. Look, it's just about changing time frames and retracements. So a one candle that I'll call a bottoming tail, a two candle reversal will say, oh, that's a big bullish reversal, you know, engulfing or whatever. And the one on the right, maybe that's called a morning star or some kind of spinning reversal. Call it whatever you want. It's just bullish. It reversed all the way up from where it came down from. Common sense, right? And so as we expand time frames, we see more bars. If we condense them, we see less bars. We're interested in where it was, where it went to, and how far it got back to where it was. Forget the names and the hype. As I'm saying, you're thinking as a master trader. So here are different examples of bullish setups right sometimes it's just a normal pullback reversal it could be a red bar ignored a breakdown failure right we're looking at retracements between bars or retracements between maybe swing highs and swing lows as it says in the middle i don't care what you call it right it says it's going up all of these examples and these and you know these different patterns that we look for um and if we condense them it could look like the one in the middle 
The whole focus of what we do at Master Trader is to simplify and remove all the squiggly lines and hocus pocus. So let's just talk about some foundational patterns, right? Retracement patterns. Prices pull back to support, right? The whole concept, what was resistance becomes support. Yeah, I get it. Now it's pulled back there and it forms a reversal, whatever it looks like, you know, a big bar or a bottoming tail or a topping tail, right? That gives me some information to trade off of. Retest and failure patterns. I like these a lot because it goes sideways over a long period of time, creating a larger area of support or resistance. Um, so more individuals, traders, investors, whatever the time frame you're looking at, have been able to get involved here, collect more information to make more informed decisions. Flag patterns. They create support in a bullish trend or they create resistance in a bearish trend. And flags occur after a momentum move. In other words, as I said, they're just creating support. They're not pulling back. So that is bullish. And if they can't retrace after a big move down, that's bearish. And bases. You know, we trade breakouts and breakdowns. And it's another way of creating support and resistance. So if prices were going up and then they went, went up fast and they went sideways for a while. And then they begin to break out to new highs. Yeah. We buy that and vice versa for downtrends. So as we could see here, right, on this chart, um, we have a nice consolidation and then an explosion, right, that big green bar at the end of October out of that consolidation. And so then it goes sideways and, you know, we we'll call it a one, two, three pattern. That's a continuation pattern. Now, the wide range bar, that big gap up after that breakdown that failed, that's great information. And a consolidation and all of these patterns are what we use to trade every day, whether swing trading or day trading, um, whether it's flags, one, two, threes, 180 reversals, pullbacks, breakouts, and breakdowns. We just read them bar by bar. Right? So this retracement here, um, right? It, Deep, fast retracement to the low, right? And it reverses. That looks, I think it'll go down. Well, it didn't. And it retraces all the way back up again, right? And then it's just a sloppy mess as it churned its way higher. And then up at the top in December, right? It makes this double top. And we see this minus WRB, nasty red bar to the downside. So it goes fast down to the prior low. And now it can't retrace. And that whole move from October into the end of December creates what we call a void below. Right? It went up and then it went sideways and now there's little to nothing below. It couldn't retrace. That's a good setup that it's gonna continue to go lower. All right, so here's one of the best testimonials emails that I got of someone that spent countless money using all you know, the waves and the GANs and so on and spent all this money and, you know, got the aha moment after, you know, getting involved with Master Trader and saw how simple and amazing it truly could be. All right, support and resistance. Um, just look to the left. Where is it? So there's no hidden, there's no proprietary levels, right? These are what I call market ploys. And we'll say, well, when it's broken, you know, uh, that support becomes resistance and vice versa. Um, so it's about supply and demand. So as we're looking to the left here, right, we say, well, why does it happen? Well, as you, what happens typically is inside a smaller time frame, there's some congestion. Sometimes it happens in the time frame you're looking at, but it's this reaction to that high over to the left that why people buy traders by the pullback there and the same in the downtrend. Um, so there's that re little reaction, to the prior area to the left and traders sell into it. If you're looking at a daily chart, sometimes you can't see it, but if you look at an intraday chart, the majority of times you will see it. So as we look at trends and we look at these points, these V reversals here, um, we just simply say, again, with retracements, the deeper it retraces, 
back down to the prior swing low, right? The greater the high, odds of breaking the, the trend. Now, once it does that, it violates that prior low that preceded the higher high, and it's violated the trend. And you don't need any lines on your chart to do that, right? So again, you ask this question, if I connect points on a chart and projecting it into the future, that can create support and resistance, right? I thought it could until I saw it didn't work. I don't know how many times, well, it was probably a hundred where the light bulb went on. And I said, you know, I thought to myself, this is crazy. Um, so as I explained to you, right, if it violates the swing low prior to the higher high, the trend is broken, plain and simple. I don't need any algorithms, fib lines, waves. All I need is my eyes to look at it. So here's an example when I captured these, what I was looking at. And you can see where the arrows are pointing to as it comes up near the prior high on the daily chart. And it begins to consolidate there, a couple of overlapping daily bars. Well, when I look on the 60-minute chart, it's going to look like a base. And that's where I'm looking for prices on a pullback on a daily. If I'm looking at the intraday chart for things, the prices to begin to stabilize at that point. It's really simple. Now, as I see prices break out here, right, and it clears the red line, right, it did it fast, and it cleared that resistance. Now, there's more resistance over to the left. So this thing isn't totally out of the woods here yet. But when I see that red bar, that first star there, get negated and completely reversed, right? remember retracements, it retraced that red bar more than 100%. That's a good sign after a gap up at resistance. That's bullish price action. The second star, it gaps down below the low of the prior bar. And by the end of the day, it's up at the top. So that combination of candles bar by bar tell me that the big money is continuing to come after the gap up bullish price action and now that absorbing that supply or that bullish price action suggests it's going to keep going up so the prior lows that you can see from november that should get taken out based on this kind of price action that's an assumption i don't know what'll happen uh but again we do have some assumptions and beliefs based on the analysis uh, here on this chart, I can see a whole bunch of information. The gap reversal down at the low, you can see a gap down and reverse. Now the retracement that it had, right? We call that a, a bullish shakeout. I don't know it's a shakeout until it retraces a hundred percent of where it fell from. So even if I get stopped out, which I probably would have been, right, after it broke down there in December and it retraces back up to the high in March, I was like, all right, I got shook out. What do I do here? But that's bullish price action. It's a new entry point for me. And then we got, it says WRB igniting, it's exploding a move. The bullish consolidation is going sideways, creating that support level. You can see the next bullish consolidation, and it says same as a bottoming tail bar. What does that mean? Well, it retraced 100% after gapping down. It retraced 100% of the red bar. So if I was to squish those two bars together in a higher time frame, it would look like a bottoming tail bar, maybe a big green bar. Anyway, it's bullish. And the last wide range bar, WRB igniting, it's continuing to go up and it's coming out of that consolidation. I can only believe it's going to go higher. And then at the top where it forms what we call an M top, right? There's those topping tails up there. The momentum is slowing down. Maybe it's a sideways correction, but maybe it's going to pull back. I'm not so sure, but it's definitely losing momentum. I mean, I'm sure of that. Right Now I have to look over to the left and see, is it at resistance? If it is, well, that increases the odds even more that the move is over. Money management. This is your basic money management starting point, right? If you're not thinking like this, you're going to lose money. And this is just a hypothetical account where it says, hey, I'm willing 
to lose $1,200 on any given day. And I'm going to break up those trades into four different trades, and I'm going to risk 300 bucks. And depending on where my stop is, those are the amount of shares that I can enter. And if my stop is hit, I lose 300 bucks. I move on to the next one, right? I'm still up at bat. But if I strike out, and I've got an extra strike there with four, but if I strike out, <clears throat> I'm benched. I can only watch on the day because I can't lose more than 1,200 bucks on, on any day. And so you set these parameters and you would do the same, okay, for the week, right? You lose 1,200 bucks again the next day, you better think about, you know, what you're doing because you're not doing something right here. So a little bit about Master Trader. Dan and I, Dan's my partner. We've known each other for over 20 years. Um, we do what we call MT Live every Wednesday. We'll be doing it tomorrow at noon. You can uh, log in to our chat room. If you're on our emailing list, you got the link. If not, go to YouTube tomorrow at uh, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Master Trader and listen to what we're going to do, right? There's something great to learn every single Wednesday at 12 noon, either on YouTube or in our Zoom room. We do a pre-market analysis of what's happening in the markets, the futures markets, um, you know, the cues, the spiders, the market internals we talk about. Dan reviews gappers and open trades. He'll tell you the trades that we're in, how we're managing them and such. So there's great information every Wednesday and every single morning at nine o'clock. Um, so if you just come in and listen about what we're doing, there's a tremendous amount of learn for free. Right? So I can tell you what to do, right? right? You can, that might be you. Just tell me what to do. Well, you can buy somebody's indicators, red light, green light, or you can subscribe to one of our letters. I'll tell you, you know, what to buy, what to sell. Uh, Dan will tell you what option trades to put on. Right? He's an option specialist. Um, well, you might say, you know what, Greg? Eh, you can, I can start out. You can tell me what to do, but I'd rather you show me so I could do it myself. I can teach you a method with a training plan and money management, and you can be a professional to do this for the rest of your life, right? And you could learn how to read the markets, how to manage markets in different, you know, the market environments change, right? Strong uptrends are great. Well, some things change. You have to learn how to read those changes. That's what we do in the green room every day. We, we explain, we teach. We give trades, you see how we manage them, you see how we make money, how we lose money, we, we stop out, right? So it's all great information. This is uh, one of my, I use TC2000 as a screening uh, platform. So I created a whole bunch of scans looking for these patterns, uh, basing the blue one, and we have wide range bars on dailies and weeklies, one, two, threes, pullbacks to moving averages, bottoming tails, 180s. Is it trending up or down and so on? So all of this puts us in the ballpark of what's moving. And when you sign up to the Master Trader family, right, green room, take a course, what have you, if you're using this platform, we'll give it to you for free. Right? No charge for this. Right? Well, I guess there is a charge. You, ha you have to join us in, in some fashion. But if you're using this platform, which I've been using for a very, very long time, and you're interested in using these scans, they're yours, right? And if you take a course, swing trading course or MTS or what have you, you understand how to use all of this. And then, you know, as, as I said, it puts you in the ballpark. And uh, with all that, right? so the offer here today is my swing trading course, lifetime coaching sessions, a month with Dan and I in the green room, the advanced credit spread course, you have tons of traders that love to do credit spreads, income strategies every day. Um, so you get a month of the swing and options trader, swing trades, credit spreads. Uh, you get a month of the weekly options trader, short-term credit spreads. And you get the scans as well. And the price today, and normally it'd be $21.74. The price today is $7.79. And if you go to the link that Dave is going to share with you, um, there is a code there that if you enter it into the checkout, it's going to reduce the price to $779. And with that, you know, you start educating, you know, through the courses, you come into the chat room, 
you listen to what we're doing every day. I mean, we do a tremendous amount of education in there every single day. Um, you can email us with questions. Right? Someone emailed today about what do I do with this credit spread? You know, I don't really care for the way it's acting. I create a video in a few minutes. I send it to them with charts, explain to them what, you know, what to do. Um, or you just come in the room and you just ask right there. 